Hi there, everyone. Welcome to our lesson on sea floor spreading. Now, in our last lesson, we discussed Alfred Wegener's theory of continental drift, and this is what it said. Alfred Wegener stated, based on evidence that he saw and he used, that all of our continents and land masses were connected as one big supercontinent called Pangaea. And he coined this supercontinent Pangaea because it means all Earth. And then he stated that all those continents that were once together had eventually drifted apart and moved to their current day positions, as you see on today's map here. The one problem that Alfred Wegener had was he couldn't explain how this moved because obviously the question that was asked was how do these huge massive pieces of land move across the Earth's surface? Well that wasn't found out later until the 1950s, long after Alfred Wegener's death. And the phenomenon that actually moves these land masses is a phenomenon called C4 spreading. So let's get started on that. Now before we discuss C4 spreading, we have to discuss the topography of the ocean floor. Long ago, scientists basically thought that the ocean floor is flat and sandy. Kind of like when you walk into the first five, six feet of water at the beach. Usually the beach is pretty flat and sandy at that point. Now that's what they imagine the entire ocean looking like. And it wasn't until they developed technology called sonar where they could actually see or what the ground looked like underneath the ocean. Before we get on and discuss all the rest of the stuff, let's quickly talk about how sonar works. Okay, so here we have this animation and we have a ship at sea and it's at the top and it's looking for a submarine. So sonar works like this. The ship at the surface is going to send a signal, a sound wave, down to the bottom of the ocean. And since scientists know how fast sound travels, all they have to do is record the time and eventually find the distance and figure out how deep the ocean is. And based on the computer technology that they have, that technology could take that sound wave coming back and create a picture of it. And you can see that happening here. So as the submarine continues to move underneath the ship, since it's higher up above the ground, those sound waves are going to come back faster and create this image of the submarine as you see on the radar. So when they used the sonar, the sonar developed a picture where they saw that the ocean floor was not flat as they imagined. They discovered that the ocean floor is actually filled with mountain ranges, which they would call ridges. And based on some of the information that they had, they also noticed that earthquakes took place in some of these locations. So to get a better look at what these ridges look like, we'll take a look at this graphic here. Now you might recognize this as the opening graphic, and the reason why I use this is because this map actually has a wonderful picture of mid-ocean ridges. If you take a look, here's North America, South America, and Africa, and here's the Atlantic Ocean in between. If you take a look down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, you'll notice that there's this range or this collection of mountains that runs down. This is your mid-ocean ridge. And specifically in the Atlantic Ocean, it's called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge because it's in the middle of the Atlantic. But as we can see on the map, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is not the only mid-ocean ridge there is in the world. You'll see that the Mid-Atlantic Ridge actually curls around the southern part of Africa and then heads on up toward India. And then you can see another ridge forming right here. And then in the Pacific Ocean, you have the Pacific Ridge. So you have this long chain of mountains and volcanoes along the bottom of the ocean, and it curves along Antarctica and heads back up towards Australia and then connects back over here. What scientists then noticed was that there's these mountain ranges in the middle of our oceans, as well as other surface features. And this really surprised the scientists. After they decided to call these mid-ocean ridges because they were in the middle of the ocean, they raised the question of how these ridges were formed. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Now, to answer the question about how these mid-ocean ridges formed, a process called C4 spreading was proposed. C4 spreading was proposed by Princeton geologist professor Harry Hess, who's pictured right here. And what he proclaimed was this. Activities in the mantle caused the seafloor to move apart. What Harry Hess proposed was this. First of all, if we zoom in over here and take a look here, we're going to have our, our lithosphere, okay, the top part of the mantle and the oceanic crust and continental crust as well. And underneath it, we have the asthenosphere, that putty-like layer. And as you can see, what's going to happen is magma is going to rise because it's less dense through an opening in the Earth's surface. And this is where the mid-ocean ridge is. So as this magma rises to the Earth's surface, it's going to cool and form new rock. What it will then do is push the ocean crust to opposite sides away from the mid-ocean ridge. A second thing that happens to help C4 spreading occur is that when oceanic crust collides with continental crust, since oceanic crust is heavier or more dense, it sinks down into the Earth. 
And when it sinks down into the earth, it's going to pull the rest of the ocean floor with it. So the forces of pushing at the ridge and then the pulling of the plate is going to cause the ocean floor to spread. So let's take a look at an animation of this so we can see it clearly. So here we have our cutaway of the earth and the lithosphere. So here we have the lithosphere up, up at the top with the oceanic crust and the mantle and then the asthenosphere below. Now, as we remember, as we get deeper into the earth, the mantle gets hot or the interior of the earth gets hot. And as a result, some of that rock gets melted. And when that rock gets melted, it turns into magma and that magma erupts onto the surface as we could see here. Once it hits the cold ocean water, it cools and forms new rock or younger crust. When this younger crust forms, it's going to push previously formed crust out to the sides away from the mid-ocean ridge. As a result, this causes the seafloor to spread. And that's what seafloor spreading is. It's the actual spreading of the seafloor by new crust being formed at the mid-ocean ridge and old crust sinking back down into the earth. So how do scientists prove this? Well, there's two major pieces of evidence they looked at, and that's what we'll take a look at now. So to prove this, scientists looked at two types of evidence. They looked at rock samples taken from the ocean floor, and they looked at magnetic clues in those rock samples taken from the ocean floor. So here are what the rock samples show. Again, as we just mentioned, what scientists noticed is that the younger rock were located closer to the mid-ocean ridge, and the older rocks were located furthest away from the mid-ocean ridge. So how does this prove C4 spreading? Well, as we said, since the older crust is furthest from the mid-ocean ridge, it must mean that the younger crust at the mid-ocean ridge is pushing the crust and spreading it apart. Now, if we take a look at this picture here, we'll see that we have a map of the Earth, and the gray areas are your, are your land masses, your continents. So here's North America, here's South America, and here's Africa. And in between, we have the Atlantic Ocean. This is the ocean floor, and it's color-coded by its age. If we take a look at the key here, anything closer to red is usually younger, is going to be younger rock, and anything more towards blue is going to be older rock. So if we take a look down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, we see the mid-ocean ridge here. And around the mid-ocean ridge, we have the youngest rock. So as this rock formed at one time, it pushed the previously existing rock, the yellow band of rock, away from the ridge. And the yellow rock, when it formed, pushed the green layers of rock away from the ridge. So as a result, the older rock gets pushed apart and pushed away, and the younger rock is towards the middle. So this helps to explain C4 spreading. Now, another piece of evidence that scientists used were magnetic clues in the rock. And let's take a look at this graphic to illustrate that. So first thing that you need to know is this. The Earth has a magnetic field around it. And as magnets go, there's a positive end, the north end, and then there's a negative end called the south end. So as you guys learned in sixth grade, opposites attract. Well, when magma erupts onto the surface, what happens is this. Since the magma is a liquid, you're going to have loose iron minerals that are magnetic. And when they erupt out onto the surface, what they will do is they will align themselves towards the positive pole of our Earth's magnetic field, which eventually is at the South Pole. So our magnetic iron minerals are going to align themselves as they pour out onto the surface towards the South Pole. But our magnetic field has this really bad habit of flipping and reversing itself. So where the positive charge here is down at the South Pole, it flips and then eventually positions itself at the North Pole. So when this magma then spills out after that's happened, the magnetic iron minerals will then also flip and change their arrangement. So they will then point in the opposite direction. So what's going to happen here is now you have rock that are creating strips and bands of rock with alternate or reversed orientations towards the magnetic poles. And of course, one flip isn't good enough, so the Earth's magnetic field is going to flip back to normal, where the positive is back down at the South Pole. So as this magma continues to flow out, it's going to create more crust with the minerals pointing towards the South Pole. Now, how does this explain C4 spreading? Well, if the floor didn't spread, it would just create this big mountain of just rock in the middle and with this mishmash of iron orientation. But since the floor spreads apart, what happens is the crust gets ripped apart, moves away, and as the new crust forms with the reversed polarity or reversed orientation, it creates this new strip here. And as this crust starts to form and widen and widen, it's going to expand until the poles flip again.
And when the poles flip again, this pink band gets pulled apart and then this new yellow band of crust is formed with the original normal orientation of the iron filings. And as a result, we get these alternating and matching bands of magnetic reversed and normal oriented iron filings on the ocean floor. And this is what helps scientists to support and prove that the seafloor is actually spreading. So magnetic clues, loose iron minerals in the magma align themselves with magnetic north. And then the scientist knows that the magnetic alignment reversed back and forth in strips that were parallel to the mid-ocean ridge. And as a result, these strips are made by the spreading in the ocean floor. All right, folks, that wraps up seafloor spreading. I hope you found that helpful.